layer four, the transport layer. In layer four, we use this as our dividing line between the upper and lower layers of the OSI model. Your data is sent as segments going, going through the layers. TCP and UDP are also found at this layer, which is our transmission control protocol and our user datagram protocol. We also conduct our windowing and our buffering at this layer. Transmission control protocol, or TCP, is a connection-oriented protocol. It provides reliable transportation of segments. If a segment is dropped, the protocol detects this and resends it as a retransmission. Acknowledgements are received for successful communications, and any failures are asked to be retransmitted. This is good for all of our network data that needs to be assured to get to its destination. In the left, you can see the picture of the three-way handshake. The three-way handshake occurs when the sender initially sends a SYN saying, I'm going to send you some information. A SYN is for synchronize. The receiver then sends a SYN ACK, or synchronous acknowledge, saying, I acknowledge that you're going to send me some information. And then the sender will send them an acknowledgement, saying, I acknowledge the fact that you acknowledged me. So basically, hey, John, I'm going to send you information. OK, Jason, I'm ready to receive that information. OK, John, I'm re I understand you're ready. Here it comes. That's our three-way handshake. The user datagram protocol, on the other hand, doesn't use a three-way handshake at all. It is a connection-less protocol. It's unreliable for transport of segments, and if dropped, the sender becomes unaware. There's no retransmission, but it is much faster because there's less overhead, and so it gives you an increased performance. This is really good for audio and video streaming because of the reduced overhead. As you can see in the image, one guy is sending it to the other and goes, are you getting this? And the other guy goes, who cares? Just send it faster. All we care about with UDP is speed. We don't care about reliability. So when we look at TCP versus UDP, TCP is reliable, where UDP is unreliable. TCP is connection-oriented, UDP is connection-less. TCP has segment retransmission and flow control through windowing, but UDP there is no retransmission or windowing. TCP, we have sequencing of our segments in the proper order. UDP, we just send it out, there is no sequencing. And TCP, we acknowledge that there are segments uh, that, as they come in, but UDP, there are no acknowledgments at all. Windowing. So with TCP, we actually have what's called windowing, and this allows the client to adjust the amount of data that is sent in each session. For instance, in the image on the left, the window size is 3,000 bytes. So as it sends out sequence information of segments, it's going to send two segments of each one of 1,500 bytes. Once those are sent, the acknowledgement is received. Two more are then sent, and the acknowledgement is received again. The window size is determined in the number of bytes before the acknowledgement is expected. Every time we send bytes and we hit that window size, we expect another acknowledgement, and the acknowledgement number will go up by one. This window is continually adjusted as well, so it can send more or less data for each segment. This will adjust lower if more transmissions have to occur. For instance, if I'm transferring a file and the, there's interference on the wireless signal, I have to retransmit. It's going to close the window and make it smaller, so I'll have to acknowledge more frequently. But if I have a good signal and I'm sending a lot of data really fast with minimal retransmissions, it will adjust the window size open more to allow me to get more data in between each acknowledgement, reducing the overhead and increasing my workflow. With buffering, devices such as routers and switches have memory that's allocated to store segments if the bandwidth isn't readily available yet. So in the case of this router, it's got a, a throughput of 62 megabits per second but the devices that are sending data are sending it at 1 gigabit per second or 1,000 megabytes per second, over 10 times faster. So if both those devices were transmitting at the same time and continually, that router wouldn't be able to keep up. Instead, the buffer would fill, and if the buffer gets too full, it will end up overflowing and dropping segments. These segments that are dropped can no longer be re uh, received, but that's okay because if these devices are using TCP, they'll resend because the receiver wouldn't have received them. Um, the other way to increase your buffer is increase more memory to the router, or you can increase your WAN speed. In this case, going from a 60 megabit per connection, maybe to a 100 or 150 megabit per second connection to increase our speed. So some examples we have of layer four is TCP, UDP. We use hardware devices like WAN accelerators and load balancers, and we'll talk about those more when we talk about quality of service. Uh, and we also have firewalls that operate in layer 4 because they're working based off TCP and UDP connections and tracking those TCP handshakes um, and requests to ensure that things are going in or out of the networks properly.
and that is the transport layer.